Hello and welcome. My name is Hanifi Barish. Uh, I'm a research fellow at the University of Aberdeen. Um, post, I'm doing a postdoc on democratic innovations and renovations in Kurdistan and Mexico. Uh, my specific focus is on council democracy as a model of autonomy. Uh, I have been studying minority rights, minority political movements, and nationalism within the wider context of political theory. And today we are going to uh, talk about minority rights in the context of democratic innovations initiated by minorities in Kurdistan and Mexico. Uh, we will speak in three sections, uh, so videos will be in three parts as well, in order not to bore you to death with a long video. The first section will be about the negative construction of permanent minorities in the nation state system. The second one will be about minorities as pioneers of democratic innovation. And the third section will be about council democracy in theory and practice, updates and an outline. So we will start with the first one, the first section, which is uh, covering how state centrism constructs minorities as anomalies and why remedies have been ineffective. So state centrism constructs minorities as anomalies uh, because minorities have been um, seen or constructed as problem peoples or perceived if, if we do not put the agency in there, but I want to uh, put the agency, uh, what I mean by agency is that um, groups of people are actively and uh, deliberately knowingly being constructed as these or that. So it's not only how we perceive, it's also how we construct and reconstruct ourselves, our identities and other groups' identities. So in general, after nationalism coupled with racism that raged the world for about two centuries, minorities at the end of the, sec the First World War uh, were kind of constructed like the enemies within, threats to unity, national security, to the territorial state integrity or to the national integrity or to cultural purity. Uh, well, uh, that's because nationalism coupled with, with racism claims a homeland for an ideally homogene, homogeneous group of people and marks others as a threat. So if you claim that a certain region territory belongs to a group of people, then you start seeing other peoples as threat by uh, by extension. And that's what has been happening for the last two centuries at least. So they are also have been, you know, constructed as forces, sources of division and disorder, manipulated as being, you know, seen as the, the, the minorities as manipulated by our enemies abroad or by, by foreign powers as well. They are also being, they also have been constructed as obstacles to progress. So uh, you will see in every nation state or in every political community, um, Minorities are generally marginalized, disadvantaged. That's why they are probably the most um, socially uh, disadvantaged or um, the socially the, the poorer sections of society. And uh, these will, one of the reasons, of course, they are, the, the main reason probably that they are in that uh, very um, disadvantaged situation politically, socially, and economically is that they are being excluded from certain, uh, through certain mechanisms, from certain, um, from access to certain uh, social and political capital. But at the same time, these political communities, or at least their elites, will construct the minorities as poor, uncivilized, backward, underdeveloped, and uh, consider that that's their own fault or their own, of course, 
um, doing uh, they say their own mm, not mistake but they will think that what well, minorities have themselves to blame and nothing else uh, in general of course uh, and in the context of colonialism basically colonized people as well as minorities have been uh, have been let's say referred to in certain literature as people without history because they uh, these um, let's say scholars or uh, thinkers would uh, will say that or have been arguing that uh, because the because history is written by basically the the powerful and the victor and uh, the minorities and the colonized people um, did not have access to the same this opportunities or to the same means of writing history they were left outside history books outside formal education as well and uh, constructed as at best folkloric elements within a dominant national identity so this is how state centrism constructs minorities so there have been remedies of course since uh, at least in my in, in the context that i am looking at it since the end of the first world war because the end of the first world war is also the birth of a nation state system a global nation state system so first generation of minority rights appear uh, or minority protection appear after 1919 with the let's say the the establishment of league of nations but it's generally bilateral or multilateral treaties or kin state protection that uh, tries to protect minorities from aggression of uh, larger groups and states but it's also open to misuse and uh, they they were pretext for invasions and annexations so a very of course relevant example now is russia's invasion of ukraine and uh, the pretext for that was that russian minorities in ukraine have been oppressed by by the ukrainian political system and uh, this, this has been on going on for the last at least uh, 100 years at least since the establishment of the first generation of minority rights also it didn't work because there wasn't a regional or global mechanism to protect minorities who that didn't have a kin state so okay russia protects the russians uh, in other states germany as a state protected or uh, can protect R germans in other states likewise turkey can protect turks in other states or ha have a claim to protect them actually cyprus has been you know north part of cyprus has been under turkish occupation since 1970s and that's the the pretext is of course protecting the turks in in cyprus but the groups or minorities without a state of their own don't have this protection the kurds the jews at least until uh, the um, establishment of israel we can talk about that the jews also didn't have any protection the court the kurds is, is a very important example they also don't have any protection from any other state so that's why this remedy doesn't work one of the reasons anyway and uh, almost all minorities fell prey to nation building and assimilation policies even though you know there will be uh, certain protection provided by multilateral or bilateral um, agreements or the, a group will have a kin state that will look up uh, that will not at least in in, in theory um, try to protect them against the aggression of other states still all of them uh, to a certain extent have undergone assimilation policies a national minority with a claim to a homeland faced further oppression not only uh, not only assimilation but they have undergone or um, uh, experienced displacement even genocide again the case of the kurds and the jews are uh, very probably most known to examples there is also a second generation um, remedies that were ineffective so after uh, 
after the Second World War, it became clear that um, bilateral or multilateral treaties and key state protection was not enough to protect all minorities or to protect human rights. If we if we refer to a more general frame, so United Nations was established in 1945, and uh, due to you know the um, the Holocaust, there appeared a, a, a slogan of never again uh, because of the horrors of the uh, because the horrors of the holocaust uh, basically so you know negatively influenced everyone who had a uh, who had a certain respect for human dignity and human rights so people started saying that well this kind of uh, monstrosity should never happen again. And of course, they, there comes uh, the second regime of minority rights and protection. Um, after the establishment of the United Nations, then comes so far, I think we have about 21 United Nations treaties. So United Nations as a global mechanism is also following up or at least trying to implement these treaties. So it's not up to member states only. Uh, also, there is a global mechanism of human rights protection and minority protection. Then comes, so this is, of course, human rights, and then comes the another category, which we call multiculturalism or group rights, or otherwise known as the politics of recognition or identity politics or minority nation building. All of this refers to a set of rules or more precisely to a model of minority autonomy and minority rights protection uh, that um, is an extension or predicated upon um, universal human rights. Why this also that doesn't work or, or, or hasn't been working uh, completely uh, in preventing certain aggression against minorities, uh, and there have been genocides, uh, multiple genocides actually, since the end of the Second World War, despite the slogan of never again, and the activities and the norms, standards, and institutions uh, that's supposedly in place to prevent any genocide from happening again. The reason uh, there are multiple reasons, but uh, I think the most important ones are uh, uh, that minority nation building also contribute to or legitimize state hierarchy. So if a majority is uh, kind of due to nationalism and um, according to um, the nation state system that has been um, uh, hegemonically, uh, let's say, um, followed or uh, not followed, that the nation state system has been, let's say, dominating uh, global politics or world politics since 1919. So if, if it is uh, normal or standard or um, legitimate for a for a group of uh, people, for a majority to engage in nation building, then it should be so for minority nation building as well. And that comes out of the multiculturalist model of autonomy or human rights, pro uh, group rights protection. And minority nation building is always in clash with majority nation building. And if a group or a political elite uh, deems, uh, let's say, necessary in their own view, of course, or deems uh, inevitable, um, oppressing a certain minority, then this might lead or this can lead to, to genocides and to uh, a kind of uh, natural uh, establishment of status hierarchy. So the majority is the kind of uh, makes general rules 
in a polity, in a political community, in a state, and the minority makes rules about a local uh, political community or in a very limited way. So hierarchy, a kind of hierarchy comes as a natural thing. And the second, uh, the second reason, of course, uh, the human rights regime does not provide effective protection to individuals and groups who do not have a political status and or make their own laws. So there are groups who have a political status within the larger state, but some groups don't have um, that status. Again, the Kurds in Turkey, for instance, a good example that don't have a status. Most of indigenous peoples in um, previously colonial states don't have uh, a political status, and that makes it difficult uh, to protect their rights. So we will go to section two. Thank you for uh, bearing with me so far.